Hey, so about to do an oil change on my sprinter. Sorry if I'm too close. But anyways, I want to show you what you're gonna need to get this started. So you're gonna need a tool set. Doesn't have to be necessary that, but you'll need a tool set. Set of gloves. Of course, uh, two five quart oil um, cans or whatever you call a filter a funnel and a drain pan and you gotta make sure that drain pan is at, at least capable of um, getting 10 quarts because it's nine and a half in the sprinter and what I did I put it it doesn't look level but it's pretty basically it's standing straight I have this piece of cardboard that I keep just so I don't get dirty um, a lot of people say you'll need jacks it's your call it depends how big you are I don't use jacks I can bypass jacks because the clearance is nice enough and so we're gonna change oil filter let's do this so I'm underneath the van sorry for a shaky video a lot of you know I do have um, small stages of Parkinson so nothing too serious but my hands shake anyways underneath the vehicle this is the oil pan where it has these two openings or like two two holes that's how you identify your motor oil um, pan and this screw or this bolt right here sorry no screw bolt is what you need to unscrew it's a size 13 at least on my sprinter which is 2006 Dodge Sprinter uh, and as you guys know uh, most of the sprinters they all have the same uh, motors even though they're freight liners Dodges or Mercedes um, so you unscrew that but before you unscrew this you want to unscrew the oil cap so it creates a suction to where it easier to get um, most of the oil out and of course place your pan underneath this and make sure that you know you slowly untighten it and even if the bolt falls in the pan don't worry you'll find it later but let it all run out and try to avoid creating a big mess but this is how it looks underneath the van without jacks so plenty of room to to work so you can see the oil draining. Make sure you don't, um, you know, go over the board. The bolt fell in there. Perfect spot for it to fall. So it's gonna drain for a good period of time. You just want to make sure, you know, that you. Keep an eye on this just so it doesn't overflow. Um, and you know, if you don't have a level driveway um, or a yard, then you know, by all means, you could get ramps or jacks. Um, but you gotta just make sure that it's not tilted too far back. Uh, if it's tilted forward, it's good because as you could see. This is where the pen ends and it goes all the way back there. So you just gotta make sure that you have enough room for it to be tilted this way and that way. So basically you wanna make it as clean as possible, but man, look at all that oil. And usually diesel oil um, is really dark even after like a day or two after you change it turns colors quick. It's just because it's diesel motor, so it's not like in a gas, you know. If you change oil and like a week later you still check it's yellow, uh, brownish color, uh, this it gets dark quick, a couple days. But just make sure you don't lose the bolt so you don't really have to dig into it in, in all that oil to find it. But if you do, you know, maybe use a stick to locate it to get it to a corner and then pull it out. But I got lucky it fell in there. So just make sure you watch it to where it doesn't overflow and you should be good. Mm -hmm. 
And if you could look here, I opened my oil cap so it creates a suction. I know, I know a lot of you are gonna say that's a dirty engine. Trust me, I try to keep it clean as possible. And a couple of times you make long distance runs and all that dust and grime builds up on it. But keep in mind guys, it's 300,000 uh, mile engine array. Still runs like a beast. Anyways, gotta keep an eye on that. Okay, next. Now that the oil stopped running, you gonna unscrew the filter. And filter is this plastic cap right here. Uh, if you could see it, I use the filter grip to unscrew it. You gonna unscrew it. I'm gonna do this with one hand. So bear with me guys. While you unscrew it, I prepped the box from the new filter with the shop towel in there to put the old filter in there. Um, very important to remember when you dispose of oil and oil filter, you do this properly. Uh, a lot of uh, parts stores accept this, um, accept used oil and they can get rid of it. Same thing with filter. Wow. So as you guys can see, hopefully you can, it's stuck in there. Wow. I'm trying to get it out, but I'm losing a lot of oil. I don't want it to drip everywhere. Man, that's too much oil. The So I'm going to do this quick. I know I'm going to get a little messy, but I just have to. All right. And then right there is the entrance. And after I pulled it out, you could hear some more oil is coming out. And you can see it as well. So now, very important guys, it has a seal right here and the seal, let me set this down so it doesn't get this dirty, let's put it on this floor. And the seal right here on the bottom, it's black right now so you can't really um, see it's orange but it's this piece right here. You have to make sure you change them out you get sorry guys one hand is not the best but you get the replacements in your filter and that's your new filter so put it back exactly how you take it off put it back screw it on screw on the bolt and then stay tuned okay guys so now the most important part is how to reset your uh, maintenance light on so without a key in the ignition, you press the MI button, mileage. One, two, three, until you get to this, which in my case is negative with a little wrench on top. Then you turn the key to where the lights come on. Press this twice. One, two. Turn off the key. Press this on. Turn the key back on. See, it just reset itself back to original 10,000 miles. And that's how you reset it. So basically, key off, press that until you get to a, mile, uh, to a negative mileage or where it says a wrench. Then, make sure you insert the key, turn on when your lights are on. Press the MI button twice, quick, one, two. Then, turn off the ignition. Press the button, hold it, turn on the ignition to where it lights up, and wait, and it'll reset. Hopefully this helps. This is a 2006 Dodge Sprinter.